related to some of the trends you're identifying, uh, you know, earlier this week, Xbox announced the shuttering of four game studios. I, I know you're not the studio's chief, but how should we, how should gamers understand that move in terms of Microsoft's commitment to developing innovative, exclusive games? Yeah, you know, it's, it's always extraordinarily hard when you have to make decisions like that. Um, you know, I'll go back to what I was saying about the industry. And when we looked at those fundamental trends, we feel a deep responsibility to ensure that the games we make, the devices we build, the services that we offer are there um, through moments, even when the industry isn't growing and when you're through a time of transition. And the news we announced earlier this week is, is an outcome of that. Uh, what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? In our commitment to make sure that the business is healthy for the long term. Uh, but, but that said, our, our commitment to having our own studios and working with partners to have games large and small, you know, we're a platform where you can play GTA, but you can also play Pal World, where you can play Call of Duty, and you can also play Pentiment. That, that doesn't change. Um, and, frankly, our commitment to, the, to Bethesda and the role that it plays is part of Xbox and everything we do. It's actually been pretty fantastic. I don't know if you've gotten a chance to check it out. Um, the Fallout TV show was on Amazon. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? So that is Sarah Bond delivering the most bland and tasteless word salad mixed in with a few contradictions as she tries her best to explain why Microsoft had to close down four of their internal studios. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Now, studios shutting down isn't something new. Studios shut down due to a variety of reasons. The number one reason is due to the fact that perhaps they couldn't meet sales expectations or their product failed to deliver. And as a result, the studio may shut down. And that is the unfortunate truth in the gaming industry. You are only ever as good as your last project. So it doesn't really matter whether you made some blockbuster hit last year and it won awards and it was critically acclaimed, game of the year. If you underperform in your next project, it could signify the end of your studio now the problem that microsoft is facing at the moment is or should i say the reason why microsoft is in hot waters at the moment is this one of the studios that they shut down was tango game studios tango game studios is well known for their blockbuster hit such as the evil within one and two and most recently Hi-Fi Rush, which was lauded with praise by the Xbox executives and critics alike. So now here's the issue. Hi-Fi Rush does really well. Hi-Fi Rush over delivers and it is a success. Yet, however, they are getting shut down. So that's the disconnect that people don't seem to be understanding at the moment as to like, why would you do that Xbox when you said beforehand that you've learned from your mistakes that up once upon a time you bought a certain studio in 2008 or six, and then you shut them down and you said it was a major mistake. And then now you're repeating the same mistake now. We acquired Linehead in 2006, shut it down in 2016. A couple of years later, we reflected back on that experience. What did we learn? How do we not repeat our same mistakes? You acquire a studio for what they're great at now, and your job is to help them accelerate how they do what they do, not them accelerate what you do. We learned nothing. It seems to me that Xbox simply is crumbling under the weight of the companies and the studios that they have bought. It's almost as if you could say that they've become too big for their own britches. And not to mention that sales for Game Pass are also at a screeching halt. Console sales are also at a screeching halt. And they're not making enough money to justify them spending $70 billion on acquiring Bethesda Game Studios. So now they have to start removing the excess weight 
<laughs> and trying to look good for their investors because investors want to see growth and not a decline in growth. Where is our money? I was just thinking to myself that rather than shutting down a studio, couldn't Xbox have maybe sold the studios to Sony? Sony is well known for nurturing studios and I think Tango Game Studios would thrive under Sony's leadership and, and mentorship. Just a thought. <laughs> Bro, why am I lagging? Bro, why am I lagging? <laughs> what did I do? What? <laughs> what is this? Microsoft encourages developers to avoid exaggerated female designs. Why is this? What, what, is it, what does it say? Various female characters have played iconic roles in video games such as Laura Croft, Bayonetta, Ada Wong. Therefore, it's safe to say that females are a huge part of the industry, becoming fan favorites throughout the years. Yeah, but I got a funny, um, there's a funny thing that Bayonetta, Laura Croft, and Ada Wong all have in common that makes them very popular in the, in the video game community. They're all really fucking hot. So yeah, uh, what a surprise. However, some can come with exaggerated designs. On its website, the gaming giant discourages developers from creating such characters. Why it matters with Sweet Baby Inc. becoming highly popular, inclusivity is more important than ever for developers and publishers. You know, this criticism that exaggerated female bodies shouldn't exist in the video game sphere is honestly baffling to me. I don't understand this criticism at its source because if the criticism is such that we are saying that there is a correct way to write female female video game characters and then there's a bad way to write female video game characters an example to write good female video game characters would be to not only make them really beautiful and sexy but then make them multi-dimensional like give them personality give them goals and uh, desires and ambitions and things of that nature make them a, a complete product if you will an example of a bad design of a female video game character would be the opposite of that perhaps maybe you just you just make them beautiful but then you don't make you don't give them any personality or things like that the criticism in this aspect is not the fact that the girl is beautiful but it's the fact that she's just only beautiful. There's nothing more to her than, than meets the eye. That's just it. But unfortunately, these guys, it seems as if the very fact that the girl is pretty is a problem and it should be stumped out. I don't get that. I really don't understand why you would be so pressed about a non-existent female video game character. I can see what they're doing, what he's doing. I can see it, I feel it. I can, I can, he's cooking. Come on, I can't, come on, it's not come on. working! Did I fail? I'm stuck. <laughs> Am I gonna Did die? Oh. oh, okay, oh, we're fine. Oh, we're fine. fine. Oh, it's oh, oh, no. oh, cute. The music is really good. Oh, oh oops. Guys. I almost missed that. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Wait, so cool. you're just showing She's all very of it shiny. Right, <laughs> up, oh my God, right away. Okay, okay, okay. Wow. <laughs> I oh, wasn't expecting actress. that. Don't they am mommy? Excuse me. Okay, girl. She's stunning. They're all stunning. To be who? That is what a healthy reaction is supposed to look like when you see something beautiful on screen. You're not supposed to go, oh my God, it's exaggerated. Oh my God, it's just unrealistic. Like, nigga, who? Shut up, bitch! <laughs> Just get out, man. Just get out. You're wasting my time, man. <sighs> Stop it. Get some help. So, Typhus, you coming by the bunkhouse later? Of course. I rented a bed there. Where else would I sleep? I have plenty of room in my bed. Good. That must be very comfortable for you. I think mine's a bit too small. Perhaps we could trade? Ugh. Come on now, doll. Come on, man. Captain America New World Order might honestly be one of the biggest failures that I've ever seen Marvel do. This movie alone has gone through four, five, even six different types of reshoots. Now we're finding out that Bucky's not even going to be in this movie and he's been in every single Captain America movie. And now the cherry on top is now they're looking for new characters to replace the Serpent Society. Which if you didn't know, instead of Captain America Civil War, it was supposed to be Captain America Serpent Society, but then they moved that back. And now we finally get the Serpent Society, and now they're just like, oh, you know what, well, we're just going to find completely new characters to replace the entire group. I have no idea how a company like Marvel is finding different ways every single day to fumble every single movie that they produce. 
The sad part is, is after Avengers Endgame, a Captain America movie should have been the first project that you guys did. But no, we got seven TV shows on a bunch of BS that nobody even asked for, and now we're finally getting a Captain America movie. Like, Sam Wilson's Captain America should be the centerpiece of the future of Marvel, and he hasn't had anything. And even now, I completely forgot that he had his TV show because it's such a forgettable show, he didn't do anything in it. I believe it's more than safe to say that the big-brained ideas, the planning, the intricate detail, the world-building, the storytelling, all of that came to a screeching halt with the Infinity Saga. Now that that's been concluded, metrics for success changed and they went to tokenization. Tokenization became the new metric of success for Marvel movies. So I'm really not surprised that they're fumbling. Each and every single product that they make, they're losing far more money that they're, than they're making back. Yeah, man, that's just how the cookie crumbles, man. If you make stuff that people don't like, people won't buy your products. It's not a very novel idea. Seems logical to me. Netflix, y'all got some explaining to do. Y'all really think I wasn't gonna see this shit? For the last fucking time, Vikings were never black. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. If you want to debate on this, fuck no. After a bit of research, I did find out that they were quite diverse, but they didn't have any African or Native American inside their DNA, especially in the last 442 remains that were actually found. Now I'm on Netflix ass. We live in a period in which politicians are not very popular. Jarl Hakon. That doesn't sound black to me. He was a very powerful Viking. So powerful that he got the name Hakon the Powerful. He's been a guy this entire time. A white guy. Netflix? Oh, Netflix. Netflix decides to turn him into a black woman. This is madness. Whoever's in charge at Netflix needs a history lesson. There were no black Vikings, especially from 975 to 995. I'm talking about the year. Why does everything have to be black? Disney, Netflix, DreamWorks, all of these companies are slapping you in the face and you're just like, <laughs> cool. You don't have to make everything black. Maybe your father didn't spend enough time with you. Maybe your mother didn't spend enough time. You didn't get the type of attention from your parents. Ooh, how about, can curly fries be made straight again? Oh, that was not a reference to Daphne. Are you too far gone, Daphne? We need to know. I know it's not your intent, but that sounds homophobic. Maybe <laughs> Once again, I predict Velma. The best thing is how you see it from opposite sides. They're like, I can't believe you'd said that. I'm like, this is really funny. You know what, guys? I'm gonna go on a limb and say that today's period is by far the craziest time period ever known to man. We live in a time where we don't even know anymore what a man or woman is. We think that math, uh, math what did I say math? It's called maths. Maths is racist and curly fries <laughs> curly fries are homophobic <laughs> oh my goodness man this is this is i have i have no words man i i don't know and i wish i could be optimistic but i certainly believe that things are about to get a lot worse before they start to get better <laughs> anyway as usual Thank you, you awesome, fantastic people for tuning in and for uh, liking and subscribing and supporting my content, giving my life a bit of meaning. Remember, stay frosty and VWIW. Vote with your wallet. <laughs>